Welcome everybody, this is Alan with Daily Armor of God. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you're all doing well. This is reading the New Testament Psalms and Proverbs in 60 days. We're on day 27 today. We'll be reading John 16 through 20, Psalm 72 through 73, uh, through 74, Proverbs 1. Start in John 16, verse 1. These things have I spoken unto you, that ye should not be offended. They shall put you out of the synagogues, yea, and the time cometh that whosoever killeth you will think that he doeth God's service. This is very interesting. Let me just make a, a comment on this verse here. This is basically t telling us about Saul, a.k.a. Paul. Because he literally thinks he's doing God's will by persecuting the early Christians and killing them and imprisoning them. Um, like, he legit thinks that he's doing God's will, like, without a doubt in my mind. He And it's foretold here in John. They shall put you in the synagogues. And cometh that whosoever killeth you will think that he doeth God service. I mean, that's just so amazing. I mean... <clears throat> Amazing in the sense that it's a prediction that came true. Another instance of the Bible telling something and it coming true, coming to pass. That's what's amazing. It's not amazing that um, they're killing they're the Christians. It's not what it anyway, John 16, 3. And these things will he do unto you, because they have not known the Father nor me. These things have I told you that when the time shall come, ye may remember that I told you of them. And these things I said not unto you at the beginning, because I was with you. But now I go my way to him that sent me, and none of you asketh me whither goest thou. But because I have said these things unto you, sorrow hath filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you, but if I depart, I will send him unto you. When he has come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment, of sin because they believe not on me, of righteousness because I go to my Father and ye see me no more, of judgment because the prince of this world is judged. I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. Howbeit when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and shall show it unto you. All things that the Father hath are mine, therefore said I, that he shall take of mine, and shall show it unto you. A little while, and ye shall not see me, and again a little while, and ye shall see me, because I go to the Father. Then said some of his disciples among themselves, What is this that he saith unto us? A little while, and ye shall not see me, and again a little while, and ye shall see me, and because I go to the Father? They said, therefore, What is this that he saith a little while? We cannot tell what he saith. Now Jesus knew that they were desirous to ask him, and said unto them, Do ye inquire among yourselves of that I said a little while, and ye shall not see me, and again a little while, and ye shall see me? Verily, verily, I say unto you, that ye shall weep and lament, but the world shall rejoice, and ye shall be sorrowful, but your sorrow shall be turned into joy. A woman, when she is in travail, hath sorrow, because her hour is come. But as soon as she is delivered of the child, she remembereth no more the anguish for joy that a man is born into the world. And ye now therefore have sorrow, but I will see you again, and your heart shall rejoice, and your joy no man taketh from you. And that day you shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily, I say unto you, whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he will give it you. Hitherto have ye asked nothing in my name. Ask, and ye shall receive, that your joy may be full. These things have I spoken unto you in Proverbs, but the time cometh when I shall no more speak unto you in Proverbs, but I will show you plainly of the Father. That day you shall ask in my name, and I say not unto you that I will pray the Father for you. The Father himself loveth you, because he hath loved me, and hath believed that I came out from God. I came forth from the Father, and I am come into the world. Again I leave the world, and go to the Father." His disciples said unto him, Lo, now speakest thou plainly, and speakest no proverb. Now are we sure that thou knowest all things, and needest not any man should ask thee. By this we believe that thou camest forth from God. Jesus answered, 
do ye now believe? Behold, the hour cometh, yea, is now come, that ye shall be scattered, every man to his own, and shall leave me alone. And yet I am not alone, because the Father is with me. These things I have spoken to you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Yeah, I mean, we will. We all deal with um, tribulation every day, so in some way shape or form we do a tribulation and um but you know what god or christ overcame that means we can overcame overcome with his help his guidance by being in the word being in prayer we can overcome anything and we shouldn't fear anything in the world because we have god we are forever it says in the, in the bible we are forever secure in christ's hands and christ is in god's hand who can pluck us out literally nobody right he will never leave us nor forsake us i just love those those verses so reassuring john 17 these words spake jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said father the hour is come glorify thy son that thy son also may glorify thee as thou hast given him power over all flesh that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him and this is is life eternal that they might know thee the only true God and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. I have glorified thee in earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self and with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou gavest them me, and they have kept thy word. Now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. For I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me, and they have received them, and have known surely that I come, that I came out from thee, that they believe that thou didst send me. I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine, and all mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world, and I come, and I come to thee. Holy Father, keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me that they may be one as we are while i was with them in the world i kept them in thy name those that thou gavest me i have kept and none of them is lost but the son of perdition that the scripture might be fulfilled now i come to thee and these things i speak in the world that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves i have given them thy word and the world hath hated them because they are not of the world even as i am not of the world i pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world but that thou shouldest keep them from evil they are not of the world even as i am not of the world sanctify them through thy truth thy word is truth and thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, so that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. That they all may be one, as thou, Father, art in me, and I in them, and that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. In the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them, that they may be one, even as we are one. I in them, and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one. And that the world may know that thou hast sent me, and hast loved them, and hast loved me. Father, I will that they also, whom thou hast given me, be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory which thou hast given me. For thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. O righteous Father, the world hath not known thee, but I have known thee, and these have known that thou hast sent me. And I have declared unto them thy name, and will declare it, that the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them, and I in them. John 18 When Jesus had spoken these words, he went forth with his disciples over the brook Cedron, where was a garden, into the which he entered and his disciples. And Judas also, which portrayed him, knew the place, for Jesus oft times resorted thither with his disciples. Judas then, having received a band of men and officers from the chief priests and Pharisees, cometh thither with lanterns and torches and weapons. Jesus, therefore, knowing all things that should come upon him, went forth and said unto them, Whom seek ye? They answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus saith unto them, 
I am he. And Judas also, which betrayed him, stood with them. As soon as then as he had said unto them, I am he, they went backward and fell to the ground. Then asked he them again, Whom seek ye? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I have told you that I am he. If therefore you seek me, let these go their way. That the saying might be fulfilled which he spake, Of them which thou gavest me have I lost none. Then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it, and smote the high priest's servant, and cut off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. Then said Jesus unto Peter, Put up thy sword into the sheath, and cup the cup which my father hath given me. Shall I not drink it? Then the band and the captain officers of the Jews took Jesus and bound him, and led him away to Ananus first, for he was father-in-law to Caiaphas, which was the high priest that same year. Now Caiaphas was he which gave counsel to the Jews that it was expedient that one man should die for the people. And Simon Peter followed Jesus, and so did another disciple. That disciple was known unto the high priest, and went in with Jesus into the place of the high priest. But Peter stood at the door without, then went out that other disciple, which was known unto the high priest, and spake unto her that kept the door, and brought in Peter. Then saith the damsel that kept the door unto Peter, Art now not thou also one of this man's disciples? He saith, I am not. Servants and officers stood there, who had made a fire of coals, for it was cold, and they warmed themselves, and Peter stood with them and warmed himself. The high priest then asked Jesus of his disciples and of his doctrine. Jesus answered him, I speak openly to the world. I ever taught in the synagogue and in the temple, whither the Jews always resort, and in secret have I said nothing. Why askest thou me? Ask them which heard me. What I have said unto them, behold, they know what I said. And when he had thus spoken, one of the officers which stood by struck Jesus with the palm of his hand, saying, Answerest thou the high priest so? Jesus answered him, If I have spoken evil, bear witness of the evil. But if well, why smitest thou me? Now Annas had sent him bound unto Caiaphas, the high priest. And Simon Peter stood and warmed himself. They said therefore unto him, Art not thou also one of his disciples? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the servants of the high priest, being his kinsman, whose ear Peter cut off, saith, Did not I see thee in the garden with them? Peter then denied again, and immediately the cock crew. Then led they Jesus from Caiaphas unto the hall of judgment, and it was early. And they themselves went not into the judgment hall, lest they should be defiled, but they might eat the Passover. Pilate then went out unto them, and said, What accusation bring ye against this man? They answered and said unto him, if he were not a malefactor, we would not have had delivered him up unto thee. Then said Pilate unto them, Take ye him, and judge him according to your law. The Jews therefore said unto him, It is not lawful for us to put any man to death, that the saying of Jesus might be fulfilled, which he spake, signifying what death he should die. Then Pilate entered into the judgment hall again, and called Jesus, and said unto him, Art thou the king of the Jews? Jesus answered him, Sayest thou this thing of thyself, or did others tell it of thee, of me? Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Thine own nation, chief priests, have delivered thee unto me. What hast thou done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight, that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now is my kingdom not from hence. I therefore said unto him, Art thou a king then? Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king. To this end was I born, and for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Every one that is of the truth heareth my voice. I saith unto him, What is truth? And when he had said this, he went out again unto the Jews, and saith unto them, I find, him, I find in him no fault at all. But ye have a custom that I shall release unto you one at the Passover. Will ye therefore that I release unto you the king of the Jews? Then cried they all again, saying, Not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a robber, and he was a murderer too. It says in the other um, Gospels that he, uh, he planned some kind of coup, uprising, and he murdered somebody. So it's interesting that they say he's also a robber. So a robber, murderer. John 19. Then Pilate therefore took Jesus and scourged him. And if you don't know what this is, I think everybody does at this point. Um, just watch Passion of the Christ, that movie, 
although uh, you know not everything in it is accurate it's still a good example of this part right here of what was done scourging um, yeah just look it up for yourself it's just disgusting a soldiers plated a crown of thorns and put it on his head and they put on him a purple rope and said hail king of the Jews and they smote him with their hands Pilate therefore went forth again and saith unto them behold I bring him forth to you that ye may know that I find no fault in him then came Jesus forth wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe and Pilate saith unto them behold the man when the chief priests therefore and officers saw him they cried out saying crucify him crucify him Pilate saith unto them take ye him and crucify him for I find no fault in him the Jews answered him, We have a law, and by our law he ought to die, because he made himself the Son of God. When Pilate therefore heard that saying, he was the more afraid, and went again into the judgment hall, and saith unto Jesus, Whence art thou? But Jesus gave him no answer. And saith Pilate unto him, Speakest thou not unto me? Knowest thou not that I have power to crucify thee, and have power to release thee? Jesus answered, Thou couldst have no power at all against me, except it were given thee from above. Therefore he that delivered me unto thee hath the greater sin. And from henceforth Pilate sought to release him, but the Jews cried out, saying, If thou let this man go, thou art not Caesar's friend. Whosoever maketh himself a king speaketh against Caesar. Isn't that ironic that they're um, claiming to be loyal to Caesar, even though they're the ones being oppressed uh, by Caesar being governed and also they, they to, all they care about is themselves they just want to stay in power keep receiving donations keep being seen of men they want to keep their you know their their nice tables and their nice banquets and keep doing what they're doing they don't want anybody to rock the boat so to speak they don't give a, a crap about the people about Israel they don't give a uh, they don't care at all about any of that stuff. They just don't want to lose what, what they've been doing. So it's just ironic that they're like, yeah, you're not a friend of Caesar's, meaning that they are a friend of Caesar's. When Pilate therefore heard that saying, he brought Jesus forth and sat down on the judgment seat in a place that is called the pavement, but in Hebrew, Gabbatha. And it was the preparation of the Passover, and about the sixth hour he saith unto the Jews, Behold your king. And they cried out, Away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate saith unto them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priest answered, We have no king but Caesar. Then delivered he, he him therefore unto them to be crucified, and they took Jesus and led him away. And he bearing his cross went forth into a place called the place of a skull, which is called in the Hebrew Golgotha where they crucified him and two other with him, one on either side of him, and Jesus in the midst. And Pilate wrote a title and put it on the cross, and the writing was, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. This title then read many of the Jews, for the place where Jesus was crucified was nigh to the city, and it was written in Hebrew and Greek and Latin. Then said the chief priests of the Jews to Pilate, Write not the King of the Jews, but that he said, I am King of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. Then the soldiers, when they had crucified Jesus, took his garments and made four parts to every soldier apart, and also his coat. Now the coat was without seam, woven from top throughout. They said therefore among themselves, Let us not rend it, but cast lots for it, who it shall be, that the scripture might be fulfilled, which saith, They parted my raiment among them, and for my vesture they did cast lots. These things therefore the soldiers did. Now there stood by the cross of Jesus his mother and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Cleophas and Mary Magdalene. Jesus therefore saw his mother, and the disciples stand by whom he loved, he saith unto his mother, Woman, behold thy son. Then he saith to the Then saith he to the disciple, Behold thy mother, and from that hour that disciple took her unto his own home. And after this Jesus knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, saith I thirst. Now there was set a vessel full of vinegar, and they filled a sponge with vinegar and put it upon his up and put it to his mouth. When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. The Jews therefore, because it was the preparation that the body should not remain on the cross on the Sabbath day, 
but that the Sabbath day was a high day, besought Pilate that their legs might be broken, that they might be taken away. Then came the soldiers and brake the legs of the first and the other, which was crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was dead already, they brake not his legs. But one of the soldiers with a spear pierced his side, and forthwith came there out blood and water. He that saw it bear record, and his record is true, and he knoweth that he said, saith true that he might believe. For these things were done that the scripture should be fulfilled, a bone of him shall not be broken. And again another scripture saith, They shall look on him whom they pierced. And after this Joseph of Arimathea, being a disciple of Jesus, but secretly for the fear of the Jews, besought Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus, and Pilate gave him leave. He came therefore and took the body of Jesus. There came also Nicodemus, which at the first came to Jesus by night, and brought a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about a hundred pound weight. Then took they the body of Jesus, and wound it in linen clothes, with the spices as the manner of the Jews is to bury. Now in the place where he was crucified there was a garden, and in the garden a new sepulchre, wherein was never man yet laid. There laid they Jesus, therefore, because of the Jews' preparation day, for the sepulchre was nigh at hand. John 20 the first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene early, when it was yet dark, unto the sepulchre, and seeth the stone taken away from the sepulchre. Then she runneth and cometh to Simon Peter, and unto the other disciples whom Jesus loved, and saith unto them, They have taken away the Lord out of the sepulchre, and we know not where they have laid him. Peter therefore went forth, and that other disciple, and came to the sepulchre. So they both ran together, and the other disciple did outrun Peter, and came first to the sepulchre, and he stooped down and looking in saw the linen clothes lying, yet went he not in. Then cometh Simon Peter following him, and went into the sepulchre, and seeth the linen clothes lie, and the napkin that was about his head not lying with the linen clothes, but wrapped together in a place by itself. Then went in also that other disciple, which came first to the sepulchre, and he say, saw and believed, for as yet they knew not the scripture that he must rise again from the dead. Then the disciples went away again unto their own home, but Mary stood without at the sepulchre weeping, and as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the sepulchre, and seeth two angels in white sitting, the one at the head and the other at the feet, where the body of Jesus had lain. And they say unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? She saith unto them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I know not where they have laid him. When she had thus said, she turned herself back and saw Jesus standing, and knew not that it was Jesus. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? She, supposing him to be the gardener, saith unto him, Sir, if thou hast borne him hence, tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus saith unto her, Mary. She turned herself and saith unto him, Rabboni, which is to say, Master. Jesus saith unto her, Touch me not, for I am not yet descended to my father. But go to my brethren, and say unto them, I ascended unto my Father, and your Father, and to my God, and to your God. Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord, and that he had spoken these things unto her. Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, when the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst, and saith unto them, Peace be unto you. When he had so said, he showed unto, the, his hand, unto them his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Then said Jesus unto them again, Peace be unto you, as my Father hath sent me, even so send I you. When he had said this, he breathed on them, and said, saith unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Whosoever sins ye remit, they are remitted unto them, and whosoever sins ye retain, they are retained. But Thomas, one of the twelve, called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, Except I shall see in his hands the print of the nails, and put my finger to the print of the nails, and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. And after eight days again his disciples were within, and just Thomas with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst, and said, Peace be unto you. Then he said to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, and behold my hands, and reach hither thy hand, and thrust into my side, and be not faithless, but believing. And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God. 
Jesus said unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen, yet have believed. And many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing ye might have life through his name. All right, moving on to Psalm 72. Psalm for Solomon. Give the king thy judgments, O God, and thy righteousness unto the king's son. He shall judge thy people with righteousness, and thy poor with judgment. The mountain shall bring peace to the people, and the little hills by righteousness. He shall judge the poor of the people. He shall save the children of the needy, and shall break in pieces the oppressor. They shall fear thee as long as the sun and moon endure throughout all generations shall come down like rain upon the mown grass, as showers that water the earth. In his day shall the righteous flourish in abundance of peace, so long as the moon endureth. He shall have dominion also from sea to sea, and from river unto the ends of the earth. They that dwell in the wilderness shall bow before him, and his enemies shall lick the dust. The kings of Tarshish and of the isles shall bring presents. The kings of Sheba and Seba shall offer gifts. Yea, all kings shall fall down before him, all nations shall serve him, for he shall deliver the needy when he crieth, the poor also, and him that hath no helper. He shall spare the poor and needy, and shall save the souls of the needy. He shall redeem their soul from deceit and violence, and precious shall their blood be in his sight. And he shall live, and to him shall be given of the gold of Sheba. Prayer also shall be made for him continually, and daily shall he be praised. There shall be a handful of corn in the earth upon the top of the mountains. The fruit thereof shall shake like Lebanon, and they of the city shall flourish like grass of the earth. His name shall endure forever. His name shall be continued as long as the sun, and men shall be blessed in him. All nations shall call him blessed. Blessed be Yahweh, God, ye God of Israel, who only doth doeth wondrous things. Amen. Blessed be his glorious name for ever, and let the whole earth be filled with his glory. Amen and amen. The prayers of David the son of Jesse are ended. Psalm 73, a psalm of Asaph. Truly God is good to Israel, even to such as are of a clean heart. But as for me, my feet were almost gone. My steps had well nigh slipped. For I was envious at the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. For there are no bands in their death, but their strength is firm. They are not in trouble as other men, neither are they plagued like other men. Therefore pride compasseth them about as a chain. Violence covereth them as a garment. Their eyes stand out with fatness. They have more than heart could wish. They are corrupt and speak wickedly concerning oppression. They speak loftily. They set their mouth against the heavens, and their tongue walketh through the earth. Therefore his people return hither, and waters of a full cup are wrung out to them. And they say, How doth God know? And is there knowledge in the Most High? Behold, these are the ungodly, whose, who prosper in the world. They increase in riches. Verily have cleansed my heart in vain, and washed my hands in innocency. For all the day long have I been plagued and chastened every morning. If I say I will speak thus, behold, I should offend against the generation of thy children. When I thought to know this, I was it was too painful for me. Until I went into the sanctuary of God, then un understood I their end. Surely thou didst set them in a simpler places. Thou castest them down into destruction. How are they brought into desolation as in a moment? They are utterly consumed with terrors, as a dream when one waketh. So, O Lord, when thou awakest, thou shalt despise their image. Thus my heart was grieved, and I was pricked in my reins. So foolish was I, and ignorant. I was as a beast before thee. Nevertheless, I am continually with thee, thou hast holden me by my right hand. Thou shalt guide me with thy counsel, and afterward receive me to glory. Whom I have in heaven but thee, and there is none upon the earth that I desire beside thee. My flesh and my heart faileth, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion for ever. A really great verse right there. Our flesh fails, yeah. Um, our bodies will get old, they'll, they'll get sickness. My heart could be interpreted as, you know, your emotion, your emotional well-being. Um, yeah, you know, sometimes we get, 
can get depressed and overwhelmed by the whatever we're going through life the you know especially in the times that we're living in you know all the the crazy stuff that uh, is going on all the evil that's prevailing but god is the strength of our hearts and our portion forever amen Lo, they that are far from thee shall perish thou hast destroyed all them that go a whoring from thee but it is good for me to draw near to god i have put my trust in the lord god or in this case elohim that i may declare all thy works i really love this verse here psalm seventy three twenty six. we can trust in god he is our strength and our portion amen psalm 74 a shill of a saff o god why hast thou cast us off forever why doth thine anger smoke against the sheep of thy pasture remember thy congregation which thou hast purchased of old the rod of thine inheritance which thou hast redeemed this mount zion wherein thou hast dwelt lift up thy feet unto the perpetual desolations even all that the enemy hath done wickedly in the sanctuary thine enemies roar in the midst of thy congregation they set up their ensigns for signs the man was famous according as he had lifted up axes upon the thick trees but now they break down the carved work thereof at once with axes and hammers they have cast fire in the sanctuary they have defiled by casting down the dwelling place of thy name to the ground they said in their hearts let us destroy them together they have burned up all the synagogues of god in the land see not we see not our signs there is no more any prophet neither is there among us any that knoweth how long O God, how long shall the adversary reproach? Shall the enemy blaspheme thy name for ever? Why withdrawest thou thy hand, even the right hand? Pluck it out of thy bosom. For God is my king of old, working salvation in the midst of the earth. Thou didst divide the sea by thy strength. Thou breakest the heads of the dragons in the waters. Thou breakest the heads of the Leviathan in pieces, and gavest him to be meat to the people inhabiting the wilderness. Thou didst cleave the fountain and the flood thou drives up mighty rivers the day is thine the night also is thine thou hast prepared the light and the sun thou hast set all the borders of the earth thou hast made summer and winter remember this that the enemy hath reproached o yahweh that and that the foolish people have blasphemed thy name o deliver not the soul of the turtle dove unto the multitude of the wicked forget not the congregation of thy poor forever have respect unto the covenant for the dark places of the earth are full of the habitations of cruelty o let not the oppressed return ashamed let the poor and needy praise thy name arise o god plead thine own cause remember how the foolish man reproacheth thee daily forget not the voice of thine enemies the tumult of those that rise up against thee increaseth continually proverbs 13 a wise son heareth his father's instruction, but a scorner heareth not rebuke. A man shall eat good by the fruit of his mouth, but the soul of the transgressor shall eat violence. He that keepeth his mouth keepeth his life, but he that openeth wide his lips shall have destruction. The soul of the sluggard desireth and hath nothing, but the soul of the diligent shall be made fat. A righteous man hateth lying, but a wicked man is loathsome and cometh to shame. Righteousness keepeth him that is upright in the way, but wickedness overthroweth the sinner. There is that maketh himself rich, yet hath nothing. There is that maketh himself poor, yet hath great riches. The ransom of a man's life are his riches, but the poor heareth not rebuke. The light of the righteous rejoiceth, but the lamp of the wicked shall be put out. Only by pride cometh contention, but with the well-advised is wisdom. Wealth gotten by vanity shall be diminished, but he that gathereth by labor shall increase. Hope deferred maketh the heart sick, but when the desire cometh it is a tree of life. Whoso despiseth the word shall be destroyed, but he that feareth the commandment shall be rewarded. The law of the wise is a fountain of life, to depart from the snares of death. Good understanding giveth favor, but the way of transgressors is hard. Every prudent man dealeth with knowledge, but a fool layeth open his folly. A wicked messenger falleth into mischief, but a faithful ambassador is health. Poverty and shame shall be to him that refuseth the instruction, but he that regardeth reproof shall be honored. A desire accomplished is sweet to the soul, but it is an abomination to fools to depart from evil. He that walketh with wise men shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. 
evil pursueth sinners, but the righteous good shall be repaid. A good man leaveth an inheritance to his children's children, and the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. Much fruit is in the tillage of the poor, but there is that is destroyed for want of judgment. He that spareth his rod hateth his son, but he that loveth him chasteneth him bet times. The righteous eateth to the satisfying of his soul, but the belly of the wicked shall want. And there's so many good truths in Proverbs. Well, the whole Bible is full of good truths. So many great verses. So guys, I think my verse today is Psalm 73, 26. Because our flesh does get sick. We go through sickness. We go through uh, depression and emotional anguish or um, physical anguish, emotional anguish. Um, whatever it is, we go through that. We all go through it. But God is the strength of our hearts and portion forever. We have to put our trust in God and take comfort in this. That we have a God that is always there who will never leave us nor forsake us. So thanks for joining me, guys. Hope you have a great evening, morning, noon, wherever you're at. And as always, TTFN, ta, ta for now. Take care. God bless. Remember to put God first in everything you do. Have faith in him, trust in him, and wait upon him. And never be sorry. We'll see you tomorrow, God willingly, with more Bible reading. So thanks again. We'll see you later.